Welcome, Kurt Solmson, to the Museum of San Juan Islands Museum of Art. It's a pleasure to have you here, and I uh, certainly look forward to taking a little bit of time and walking uh, around and seeing some of these beautiful pieces that you've painted. Um, so if you could start off, please, with a little bit of bio about yourself, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. My name is Kurt Solmson, and I'm a painter, and uh, my wife and I live in Vaughan, Washington, Vaughan Bay, which is at the southern end of the sound uh, of the Salish Sea, all the way at, at the bottom of the uh, Puget Sound. And uh, I went to the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts in Philadelphia, and my wife also went there. That's where we met. And um, in 1988, we moved uh, year-round to Vaughan, I had been coming to the Puget Sound my whole life. My mother was born in Tacoma. And uh, we've been living in Vaughan since 1988. And this is a painting that I did of our house. It's a diptych, two, two canvases put together. And I paint these uh, from life. Uh, so. Instead of having an easel to carry around, I just take a, a piece of one by two and I put it on the back with a little hinge and I make a, like a tripod and I prop the painting right on the ground. And the reason it's a diptych is because I had for years been painting uh, 50 by 70 canvases because it was the biggest painting that would fit in the back of the Toyota pickup I had <laughs> when I was in school. And I still have a, a pickup. Uh, I got another Toyota pickup years later. So that was the maximum size. And, and I was doing a painting along the beach in Vaughan of a different house. And I wanted to see more. I wanted to expand. Uh, so I just went home and grabbed another canvas that was the same height, uh, sort of like this configuration. And I just propped that one next to it, and I made a longer painting, and so it, for practical reasons, I can move it around. I can ship it somewhere easily, more easily. And also, when you're looking at a long expanse, you turn your head, so you're really seeing two views anyway. So each each panel is sort of it's a composition in itself, and then I hope that they fit together in a good way too as a composition. So when I had a painting like this at the Bainbridge Museum a couple of years ago, a man came up to me and said, you know, you're doing the uh, Da Vinci uh, Golden Triangle. Or you have the percentages, you know, not 50-50. And I didn't really think of it that way. But that's another way to look at it. So this yellow boat here, my grandfather bought a rowboat in Tacoma uh, in 1935, and he rowed it to a house on Maury Island across the water from Tacoma, and we've had that boat ever since. So it's been a, a kind of a narrative uh, point in my work, and we, there are several paintings of the yellow boat in this show. You've said that the painting, uh, plein air painting, is essential. Can you give us a reason why you would say essential? It's essential to me. It's not essential to all artists, all right. of course, because uh -huh. artists have many ways to to paint landscapes specifically. But um, I, for one, uh, I enjoy the physical uh, aspect of being out in outdoors in the landscape, and and there's so much information that that one can get from being in the real world, you know. A, a photograph, for example, gives you a certain kind of information. And the problem that I have, if, if I look at a photograph and I just try to paint from that, I get sucked into that specific flat uh, information. And then uh, I'm, I'm missing out on a lot. So I, uh, I do a lot of drawings in preparation. Uh, from, from the subject, pencil drawings. And I'd sometimes take photographs 
which gives me a, uh, an idea of the particular uh, moment in time. Because when you paint a plain air, like a painting that takes weeks uh, or, even, or months sometimes, the, the seasons change. And so the light is changing and day to day, the weather yeah. conditions. So yeah. the challenge is to uh, decide on a, what, what is the moment? You know, what, what are you trying to, what is it sure. you're getting? Uh, because one of the difficulties of plain air painting is as the, as the time goes by, the shadows change. And if you're, if you're seeing each thing, oh, that looks great. I'm going to put that in. And then eventually you don't have a, a, a legible image because what, what, what one really wants is a, a certain moment, you know. Mm -hmm. Not all the highlights. So you wouldn't start a painting, say you'd step outside at 9 a.m., and then the next day you would step out at 5 p.m. or something? No, it would no, always be the same time. Try and do the same um, Yeah, time two, or two or three hour period at the maximum. Okay. And so this is early morning before the sun uh, gets on the foreground. So I, I'm doing a painting right now uh, at home that is like maybe a half an hour later. <laughs> so the, the foreground is all lit up and it, it's just a different feeling. This is right before the sun hits the foreground. So it's only up here and out on the boat. So it has a certain really quiet feeling. And, yeah. uh, and then a few minutes later, you know, and, and these, these foggy ones are another one where- We're gonna look at some Yeah, of well, we, can, we can do Yeah, that. definitely. Uh, so, I think we're going to, uh, oh, you have a question. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to know, um, the figures, are they placed after the yeah. composition, and how long would that be for? Okay, that's a good question. How, uh, how do I place figures in the painting, or how do they get into the painting? Uh, figures go in and out of paintings a lot of times, because I, as I'm working out the composition, and a painting like this, I put the figure of my brother in at the very end. That's the last thing, because I felt like it needed someone there. And, and so he came over and sat there for uh, 15 minutes or so. But a lot of times, I'll have a number of figures in the painting, and then I'll take some of them out. And it can be sensitive, because uh, it's not really how I feel about the person at all. It's, a, it's how the composition is working. So I did a painting of my daughter and her daughter. And I was looking at them. And I was in the mirror painting them. And at the very end of the painting, after several months, I painted out my granddaughter's figure because I had to make the painting work. It wasn't working. And uh, it's not a psychological. Uh, issue. Uh, it's it's all about the the, the painting. Uh, but as I say that, I mean all these paintings have psychological aspects. So I'm just saying that the the, the figures go in and out uh, so that the painting will work. So another and and just uh, segueing. Uh, Having someone sit for you, or putting a you know human body in the, yeah. the uh, picture. Um, so I'm looking at this one here yeah. with the chair on the porch. And there's no human figure in there. Right, right, right. And so um, uh, it looks like it's maybe a different. It's the same house. Same yeah. House. So I was okay. I was standing here in the summer evening, uh, all right. looking up, and uh, the question is why isn't there a figure? Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, I suppose in this painting, I, th I decided it didn't need a figure. Another aspect is I've never paid people to sit for me, mod professional models. I've always painted family, friends. So uh, it's also who wants to sit there for me. And uh, <laughs> when my daughters were growing up, I, I, I hired them when they were little. I'd give them a, a 25 cents to sit for five minutes and 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 they've continued do they want to pay a raise now oh yeah they've gone on to other careers and so that's they've moved away and so uh on the other wall there are two paintings of the of, of uh our younger daughter t done 22 years apart and i'll talk about how those were done too okay 
So let's move on. And so it seems to me, just having a, look, a quick look around, that a lot of the work is done in um, the warmer season or uh, a bright season instead of maybe a gray season, most of the paintings. And so this yellow boat, can you speak to us? Uh, you just told us that it was a family boat mm -hmm. and it was purchased many years yeah. ago. And so this photo, particular photo, actually has us kind of thinking that, well, this boat is still used uh, because it's now on the beach, ready to climb in, mm -hmm. and it's got oars on it. So can you say yeah. just a Yeah, that's a lot of good, a lot of good uh, points there, which I'll try to address. And so this boat is, is beautiful. You can see the, the, the lines of it. It has steam bent mm -hmm. cedar planks. The back is one piece, a couple boards of cedar on the sides with oak rails. So it's a w really well built. It was a flat bottomed work boat basically it was made for people to, to work out of on the Puget Sound and uh, and and so I've, do, I've done a lot of repairs to it over the years it was painted yellow because they lost it in one of these fogs <laughs> foggy days and so then they painted it this would be my grandparents painted it yellow so they could see it <laughs> so and, and and I knew this boat growing up so it means a lot to me and when I started painting I would come out in, in the summers and I realized that this cadmium yellow boat in the blue and green northwest landscape is a great color point and having a, a boat, uh, it's just a beautiful shaped boat and also it, it has a sort of a, a narrative uh, point to it, you know, it, it's not, I don't like obvious narratives but it gives you uh, some kind of a feeling that there's a story. and. Uh, the boat being part of my family is, is part of the story. But, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I painted it in many angles, uh, looking down on it. And this one, this is a place called the Haley Land Trust. It's now owned by the state of Washington it, near where we live. And we live around the bend here. So it's about a couple miles by water. And one summer, I. I, I didn't row it all the way down there. I pulled it behind a little motorboat. And I did a painting similar to this uh, there at that property. And for this painting, I went out there with the canvas and painted the whole painting on site. And then I rowed this, the rowboat to our little sand spit, which is much closer, and, but looked in basically the same direction and painted the boat into the landscape. So that's how that one was done. Okay. Okay. So first, landscape, uh, and maybe like uh, a member of family yeah. that goes in. Yeah. And, and it's a sort of a more recent thing where I, I've been uh, placing the painting into the painting. Other other times, I've I've taken this boat to other places on the peninsula. Someone said, "Can you do? I'd like a big painting of the yellow boat on our beach. Can you?" just put it into the painting. I said, no, I have to have the boat there. So I, <laughs> I, I took the boat, uh, took it over the, the, the top of the peninsula to the other, uh, to Car Inlet, rowed it down to their beach, painted it on the, the pa painting on their beach over a couple of months or so. And so it had to be there, you know, like sure. Fitzcarraldo, you know. Uh, <laughs> that, I'm the Fitzcarraldo of, of landscape painting. There you go. <laughs> so, um, over here is the boat sitting up for the winter. Mm -hmm. Now you can hardly see, but there's another boat here. Uh, we had a copy made and, uh, by someone we knew, and he just used regular plywood, and that boat fell apart after about 10 years. Mm -hmm. But So this is the boat up for the winter. Uh, so there's another angle to see it. That's, that's our house. Mm -hmm. I just have a general question. Yes. Um, you studied in Philadelphia. Yes. And you're from the Pacific Northwest. Well, I, I, uh, my mother grew up in Tacoma, and she oh. went to the East Coast to go to college, and she met my father on the East Coast and stayed there. So we were born and raised in Philadelphia. Okay, that's not my question. Oh, I'm sorry. Your paintings, the colors are so vibrant. They remind me, and I can't remember, painters that I've known in my earlier life from, from California. Okay. 
Any influence there? Yes. Okay. Definitely. Influences by the West Coast painters. Yes. Uh, I've always liked the Bay Area figurative yes. painters, yes. Diebenkorn. Diebenkorn. Yeah, Diebenkorn, yeah. Maybe um, the Bischoff a little following. Yeah, Elmer Bischoff. Bischoff. Yeah. yeah, all okay. those. I, I, yeah, definitely. Wonderful. Yeah, that was a big influence on me early on, the West Coast. So I'm, I'm, my painting is kind of a mixture of East and West Coast American painting, as well as European influences. Yeah. So speaking of uh, fog and mm -hmm. you know weather that we are so very much fond of here, yeah. let's go to this one over and okay. uh, the brightness is not there. The <laughs> you know it's quite a different scenario. Some of these winter paintings in the show, uh, because for one thing, I, I do a lot of those because of the, the way our weather is, and also I, I thought by this time of the summer people are ready to look at this atmosphere again and say, oh, that's really beautiful. But, you know, in March or February, we're all kind of tired of it and maybe don't want to see, look at it as much, I think. It's sort of the opposite seasons sometimes are attractive. So when I, when I lived in Philadelphia, I did a lot of plein air winter paintings and there was more snow there, uh, which was uh, added something to the winter landscape. It was a little easier. Uh, it, it, just, it was a certain kind of uh, winter atmosphere. So moving to the Northwest, it was a, a big challenge. To how do I paint this, all these sort of gray days that are, have this sort of minimalist beauty. So I looked at Morris Graves a lot, uh, his general atmosphere of his work, and uh, uh, Chinese painting, Japanese painting, Korean painting. Uh, you know, the, the, thing, the paintings you see on silk, you know, you can see them at the Seattle Art Museum, that kind of atmosphere. And so those are big influences on, on me. Uh, and so, uh, Big shapes in a similar way as, as the sunny paintings, but with layers and layers of atmosphere. This is, this is down by Bremerton. Looking up towards Bremerton, this is a big one, some big barge. And um, there's an estuary, and this, the foreground is just a sort of low tide that you have it in the estuary. And, and uh, so it's working many days sort of trial and error and trying different different techniques to uh, to get the atmosphere. I want the, the paint to uh, not be too literal, you know. Like I, I'm not trying to paint the details. In fact, I get rid of as much of that as I can to just have the sort of abstract forms. And towards the very end of this painting, one day I just said, I'm going to take a paint roller, and this is lead white paint, so I used a, a paint roller and just rolled over this part, the top half of the painting. After I came inside from painting, and there, that's it, that's done, you know. <laughs> so that was, that One was, of the things that, uh, it, from what you have said, just it's kind of prompted, um, the changing of the painterly approach uh, during, at least that's what I heard. Uh, so I'm looking at it and I'm standing right in front of this, this field here of paint strokes versus where more where you're standing, it's more calming and um, uh, just kind of an abstract information, giving us abstract information mm -hmm. of an estuary and then mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. and the sky. But this I find really uh, quite interesting, very energetic, almost an antithesis of the calming aspect yeah. of the fog and uh -huh. maybe a little drizzle. And, right. Yeah. Well, the antithesis, yeah, that's, there's a lot of, uh, um, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's, the overall effect is supposed to be, I would like it to be very calm and the, and the composition very simple 
but the actual doing of the painting was quite a struggle because I don't know, it just was hard for me. <laughs> and uh, that's probably reflected because there, the, oh, this is all sort of grass, you know, tall grass. And, and uh, I would probably paint it in as best I could with, and then realize, well, that is just too much, you know, and, and then scrape it off. This is more where the, low, the water is and sort of mud, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I guess I'm, what I'm trying, I'm trying to get that, uh, the feeling that you get in uh, Chinese paintings where it's very uh, spiritual, you know. Mm -hmm. And what I'm looking at, I'm trying to get that feeling, but also I'm painting literally, you know, mud and grass. And, um, so it's a combination of, of I guess, my influences. Uh, because some of the painters that I learned about in school, the Pennsylvania landscape painters, Redfield, for example, he would paint outdoors, and they're very uh, direct. So uh, George Bellows, and these sort of painters that were very descriptive. So I'm trying to be descriptive of the atmosphere, real, you know, realistic, but also atmospheric and abstract and minimalist. So I'm trying to do a lot of different things. Well, the reason I brought it up is because I'm very attracted to, first the painting, but then I'm attracted to the contrasts here, uh, both of the brightness. Even in dead of winter, such as the height of summer, you've managed to bring in this incredible uh, not color ratio, but uh, the brightness of, of the atmosphere. And I think this idea of this side of the canvas being different than the other side of right, the canvas, right. what it's trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love that flow. Uh, that's how I'm seeing this, yeah. that flow. And, and also what kind of energy is being put into. Energy, yeah. That's the one thing about the, uh, well, any artwork you want to you have energy, you see, you feel the energy, but um, we, one realizes that the, there's sometimes more color in the winter here than the summer, actually, because the sun is low on the horizon, and it, the colors are really saturated, and sometimes in the summer, the sun way up there, and you don't really see much of the color until the sun comes way low again, so in the winter, even if everything's all wet and misty, there can be some very rich, saturated, wet color. And this painting over here is a, a sunrise in the wintertime. So there's a lot of color in the winter when the sun is out, too. When I saw this painting, I guess it focused on the vase first. And um, oh, wow, that's, that's really there. That vase is, I mean, I can almost smell those flowers in that vase. <laughs> the vase is there, and then, of course, the eye, you know, the, and that, I think with all of the paintings that I'm seeing, the eye moves so beautifully uh, around the canvas, and you allow us to do that easily because of uh, how you, you know, place the images. Uh, so is uh, the uh, sitter, is that um, an afterthought? Uh, that's a very good point because uh, this figure of Lauren, our younger daughter, was in the painting and then out of the painting and then back in the painting several times because, uh, first of all, this is the same person that's in both of these paintings. Uh, uh -huh. uh, Lauren, when she was six or seven, and then 22 years later, sitting at the same uh, in the same room, and... Uh, in this one here, a winter sunrise. She's 29 years old. And this is a, a new piece of furniture that, that had belonged to my mother. And I, I wanted to do a painting looking into the room. This is done from outside of the house, looking through the window. When the kids were little, I, I painted in the house a lot. And there were a lot of paint fumes. and. So, you know, it's a mess, and, and now I, uh, I try to avoid 
get to go outside. Uh, yeah, I had to stay. I, was, I said, I'm going to stay outside and look through the window. Uh, when the sun is just coming up in the winter, uh, where we live, it's coming right up off the water. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not that early, though. Of course, it's probably 8.30 in the morning and the sun is just rising and um, I asked her to sit there for some pencil drawings when she was just out on the weekend. It wasn't that time of day but it was close enough so that um, and so I did the figure from pencil drawings and uh, uh, I was and I stood outside the window at that time of the morning and painted everything else and I, what was going on in the on the table for a while was a lot of different things. Uh, I, I'm, a, uh, I'm influenced by Fairfield Porter, the painter, oh, yes. and he always would say, well, if you touch anything, you've ruined it. You know, it has to be just as it's sitting there, and that's the beauty, that's the composition. So I was trying to do that, and it, it wasn't working, and Becky said, there's too much stuff going on there, and, and, you know. And so I simplified it, uh, and then I the forsythia were starting to bloom uh, if I brought the thing inside. So I wanted something very uh, bold in the foreground so that the figure is sitting back there. So it's not detailed. The figure is in the space and you see her uh, reading. And, but, but you don't, uh, you, you go past the, you know, your eye sees the, the still life very, uh, very quickly, directly painted, and so there's a lot of, um, a lot of information. And then you go past that, and then you see the, the figures back there, but not really detailed. So there's a mood mm -hmm. to the thing. Um, so, yes, please. Yeah. I have noticed, at least with the paintings that are here, that nearly all the figures have no features, or they're very soft features. And is that going back towards you not wanting to be too literal or not wanting to be a portrait artist? Well, good question. Uh, why, why are the figures uh, uh, g sort of general and not detailed? And you asked, uh, 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 because is it because you don't want it to be a portrait? And also, uh, well, sort of why, why is it painted like that? And a number of reasons. One, I, I want the, everything in the painting to be sort of painted in, sort of in a similar fashion so that uh, as opposed to the, the figure being much more detailed than, and then the, the other stuff being background. Um, also, I'm not a portrait painter. I don't know how to paint a really good portrait. And um, so the figures are uh, inhabiting the space I like Vuillard, and Fairfield Porter was influenced by him. Where uh, there's a lot, there are a lot of patterns within the composition, and the figure is just another group of colors, you know, shapes and colors. And uh, so, I mean, I had I had more more detail in her face, and I just I. Painted, left it like this. I took that out. You know, I wanted it to, to feel like it was. She's back there, um, and I, you know, I don't know if these work or not. You know, I just for I, me, it's, it totally does because okay. what I appreciate about the lack of distinct features is I can put myself right there. I'm sitting there reading mm -hmm. that book in that morning light, mm -hmm. and I just totally feel that whole. Thing. Yeah, excellent. Well, that's also mm -hmm. a, a good thing to hear because I. Uh, it, it, I want it to be, uh, you feel the experience, you know, that you're there and that could be you, exactly as you said, yeah. If there's one piece in the show that um, you'd want us to focus on, what would that be? Mm -hmm. that, just get more. Yeah, that we haven't <laughs> talked about. Okay. Let me think. Well, let's talk about uh, the painting is called Siesta. Mm -hmm. And I was just standing on the back porch uh, in the late afternoon and saw Becky uh, on 
on the hammock. And again, this this could be anyone. You know, if you see this painting, it's it's not a portrait, uh, and so it's it's about uh, the patterns. Uh, I was trying to so when you're painting from life, uh, there's so much information that it's difficult. Uh, to decide what to leave in and what to leave out. So uh, I was trying to make simple structure out of a cherry tree, which uh, grows pretty wild. It's, it's a volunteer cherry tree, and its main job is to hold up the hammock. <laughs> and it produces good Bing cherries, too, actually. But um, And so uh, you see it has very basic, big shapes. And then, um, then I tried to work in a, uh, a, a, a feeling for all of this stuff just by putting some of it, you know, you see here. But a lot of it is left. I didn't put every thing in there. But, um, and then the boat was back there. I wanted to have that in there. And we do keep the oars sometimes leaning up against the tree. So it's sort of a, just a narrative. Uh, uh, of, of a summer afternoon. A lazy summer afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. immediately when I looked at that and I thought, oh, comfortable. That's yeah. what summer should be, yeah. lazy and, and languid and yeah. moving. Yeah. I'm getting the feeling, um, especially when I see members, now that I know they're members of your family, and, um, and that yellow boat is... Um, Really, for me, the yellow boat is the narrative of the, the, the idea of uh, relaxation, and not just relaxation, but um, a, inviting us to see your world and how you have portrayed it in, on these canvases. And that, to me, is one of the treasures that we, we see here in this in this uh, uh, body of work, is we're looking into your world and we see uh, how you see and how you're putting it on canvas for us to view. Thank you. So I think we're going to end, unless okay. you have a closing statement for us. Well, I would just say that coming into a show like this, uh, sometimes I feel like uh, emotional because I think, oh, uh, there's my feeling, you know, I mean, my daughters, you know, I've been painting them my whole life, and it's a little overwhelming. To, there aren't as many in this show of, of my children, but you know, so sometimes artists, musicians, they put a lot of their, their feelings into the work, you know, and so that's where it is, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm glad that you enjoyed the show. Okay, this leads one more okay, question. Okay. <laughs> that'll be, that'll be okay. um, uh, and I really appreciate your 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 lovely answers. Um, can you tell us uh, in just a few sentences what you would like people to take away from this show after going through viewing? What should we take away? I would like people to appreciate what uh, oil paintings look like. I mean, you see artists, you see paintings all the time online or reproduced or, you know, talked about. Uh, and every, every reproduction looks different. It's going to be a different color. It's going to be, and then you, and you just can't even see it. I mean, you stand in front of a big painting and then you get, you understand why people started painting because if it's working, you know, it has a, a, a real effect. You see the actual paint surface, you know, why, why did he work outside and struggle with it? Why didn't he just take a photograph? And mm -hmm. that, because that's what you get, you know, if, if it works, if the painting works. So seeing, coming to an actual gallery and seeing actual paintings is really uh, the, 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 the real thing. So. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, for your time and for uh, bringing this lovely body of work to us. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you all for, for, for volunteering to, uh, to do this.
to, for the museum. That's really important.